Being a music producer in modern times is very different than it was like a decade or two ago. With the ability to release tracks on your own, you need to focus not only on composition, but also on correct mix and loudness level. The difference between mixing and mastering lays in tools to check them. First, can be done easily by ear, but for the second one, you need to monitor your levels. Unfortunately, some matters may be overwhelming and the amount of information may be distracting when you are in a creative zone. But that's where levels comes in clutch. As with all Mastering the Mix plugins, Levels offers you a variety of easy to read and responsive sections. Each section icon will go green if there are no problems and red if there are issues that need your action. Let's focus on peak first. When working with digital audio, 0dB true peak is a maximum to reach before your track starts to clip. In general, clipping is used frequently to make your music or beat sound harder, but while using it, you should avoid pushing it above 0dB true peak. Although it may sound fine in studio, but on some consumer speakers, like for example phones, it may cause unpleasant distortion. To avoid all of those problems, simply play back your audio through levels. If the meter stays green, you're good to go. If the whole interface will turn red, you need to adjust your levels either by checking the whole mix or by lowering your brick wall limiter settings. LUFS. Those four letters cause controversy in the whole music production industry. In general, LUFS values translate to perceived loudness of your track and to not bring back any loudness war flashbacks. I would say that the best practice is to match your LUFS levels to genre or to streaming platform's requirements. Of course, each streaming platform provides different LUFS standards, which you can check by scrolling through variety of levels presets. If your material will go above presets LUFS thresholds, try using less aggressive settings on your limiter to bring back your dynamic range. And speaking of it, nowadays music producers often forgot about dynamic range. Keep in mind that it's not related to how loud your track is. Getting a healthy dynamic range is highly related to how much your audio is compressed. The lower the number, the less dynamic you have. And that also translates to clarity and punch. Try not to squash your tracks with compression ratios higher than 4 to 1 and aggressive limiting. You will get better results with stacking two compressors or limiters with lighter settings. If you want to dive deeper in your track loudness, check the Loudness Range tab. It measures your entire track loudness variation in loudness units. If you're trying to create sound with lots of tension, you want a loudness range above 5 LU. If you're aiming for a consistent energy, a lower number is fine, but as with all loudness related stuff here, don't try to push it too hard. This tab and levels might be the one that you're most familiar with. The center part called Vectroscope displays your audio placement in stereo field. On the left there is a correlation meter. Reading near plus one means properly balanced mix, but as close to minus one means that your track has phase issues and it falls apart in mono. Always try fixing those, otherwise your track will not translate well to some customer or club speakers. You can treat stereo field panel as a great tool for checking and referencing your mix by listening to each channel filter different frequencies or output a mono signal. And last but not least, bass space. For me, this feature is groundbreaking. The meter here shows how much your frequency spectrum is occupied by lows while kicking bass being muted. If some of your track's elements have too much low energy, the meters here will show red. That's a sign to identify those and apply low cut filter or EQ to remove unnecessary lows. That will make a lot of room for kick and bass and will definitely help you with working on overall loudness of your track without overloading it with bass. As you can see, reading levels is not that scary at all. Of course, there are many things to keep eye on, but all of those values are in correlation with each other. By using mastering the mix levels and built-in presets, you can take control over your whole mastering process way easier 
and faster. And good news is, you can try it out for free by clicking the link in the description. Hope that video helps. And if so, don't forget to leave a like and highly, highly consider subscribing for more music production knowledge.